imperative that we invest in building a skilled workforce to meet those demands. It's my pleasure to be joined by Ivanka Trump, assistant to the president and first daughter, I believe is the official title, um, Secretary Ross, Secretary of Commerce, and Dina Powell, assistant to the president and deputy national security advisor. Thank you for joining us. I'll start with uh, Ivanka. So workforce is a topic that impacts people in various stages of their education and work life. How will the administration look at this holistically? Well, I think first and foremost, you have to break it down into um, multiple elements. So when you think about the broader concept of workforce development, you think about K through 12 and ensuring the kids graduating and coming out of our school system are equipped with the skills that are necessary in the modern workforce. And especially in, in STEM fields, for example, we see that the students are not ready and are not able um, and are not prepared either for higher education in a lot of cases or um, to enter the workforce in, in a meaningful way. So, so education is, is very core. The second area we're looking at is the role of vocational education, um, in particular apprenticeships. And we actually just had a very um, robust discussion with the Chancellor of Germany um, when she was in town just a few weeks ago because the Germans have really led the way on this front. The Swiss have done a great job with it more recently. Um, in England, we've seen a lot of focus on apprenticeship training. So really thinking about the role of vocational education and making sure that it is um, incentivized for both the students to consider it as a viable option um, and partnering with the private sector um, to, to really ensure that what's happening, the education taking place, whether it's at community college or at um, apprenticeship programs, um, matches, matches ultimately their needs, so, so skill-based education. The last thing we're looking at is workforce retraining. So for people who have been out of the workforce for a number of years and are looking to re-enter or people who are currently in the workforce, but they're in a field where um, jobs are rapidly being displaced. So how do we take large groups of people and think about um, how to um, retrain them in areas where um, their skills will be more relevant to the workforce of the future? So it's a big topic. There's tens of billions of dollars that are allocated across over 14 agencies on this topic. So another area similar to um, what we were talking about with infrastructure is really taking a look at all the programs that are out there, consolidating those programs, and working collectively. We had a meeting last week um, where um, we had the Secretary of Education, um, Wilbur. Um, we had uh, the um, Secretary Mick Nominee. Mulvaney was there. Mick Mulvaney was there, really thinking about how we can ensure that everyone's working collectively. Um, with these goals in mind. Great. Thank you. Secretary Ross, are, are there ways to incentivize the private sector to further their investment in workforce training? Many of them have taken a leadership role on this already. Yes, the big corporations seem to be finding a pretty good way to do it. If you have a large number of employment needs in given locations, you can partner with local community college, with even some of the high schools to, to accomplish the purpose. What's harder is to get the small business who has very limited needs to be able to do it. So we've been focusing some on delivery mechanisms. And one of the ones I'm kind of intrigued with is integrating technology into the delivery mechanism. You have licensing problems at schools. You have all kinds of things of that sort. So I think combining the human instructor element with internet delivered service uh, in education is a very important thing. Specifically for the small businesses, they're looking at programs whereby they can both get an assurance of retention through a kind of loan program to the students with the idea being they would gradually forgive those loans as the student stays on uh, with the employer, maybe over a five-year period, and trying to match that with tax deductibility to the corporation, but hopefully not taxable income to the student 
as the loans are forgiven, and coupled that perhaps with some loans from the Small Business Association, uh, Small Business Administration, to the little companies, backed by the combination of the company's credit and the loans that they had made to these students on some realistic loan-to-value ratio. So we're trying to get into the nitty-gritty of the how so that this can truly be rolled out on a nationwide basis and help not just big companies but little ones because the younger companies tend to be the ones who are really producing the jobs and are expanding the most rapidly. Certainly get a feel for why Secretary Ross is at the table on workforce development. Um, Dina, the private sector, um, to continue on that conversation, uh, as we've mentioned so far, they've been the leaders so far in workforce development. As we look at making this a, a, a true initiative of the administration, what role will the private sector play in that? Well, um, first of all, I think clearly defining some measurable goals in each of the initiatives. Um, having spent the last 10 years in the private sector, I'm having a little bit of whiplash coming back to government and remembering some of the inefficiencies and some of the difficulties. Um, when uh, Reed and Jared and Chris spoke to the president about taking on the IT challenge, you know, the minor thing of trying to modernize uh, the IT of the U.S. government, the president nailed it by saying, it sounds like a really hard thing to do that's going to help the next guy. <laughs> and uh, I think that's often why so many of these projects haven't been taken on. They require presidential leadership and capital uh, and a real commitment to work with the private sector. And I think the private sector will push us in the right direction uh, through the American Innovation Council to actually have measurable goals in each of these initiatives as uh, uh, Leader McCarthy was laying out. Um, when I was working um, with Kathy and, and Bob Steele and others in New York on uh, the private sector initiatives we built, uh, we really tried to think about uh, our company as, at the time, as a, a lab of innovation. The private sector can take riskier capital to build new models around job creation, economic development, whatever they may be, and actually uh, have the rigor of a measurement system to see how this program worked and what it achieved. But it really is ultimately only government that can scale programs in a meaningful way. And I do think uh, in this administration there is an incredible desire to have a real legacy around things that the private sector helped us achieve uh, that we can really uh, measure in, a, in an important way. It's, it's been interesting as we've started to study it, the same principles that are uh, holding true in countries that have always uh, favored apprenticeship programs are true here. They're just being driven by the private sector. When our, when our private sector companies team with local community colleges, help them do the curriculum, put in place internship and apprenticeship programs at the private sector while they're doing uh, the community college education, vocational education, they're achieving terrific results. People are not dropping out. They're, they're on a pathway to a job, and they're good, high-wage jobs. So this is something that we as an administration can 100% get behind and amplify, and that's really, I think, our mission. Um, I agree on that please. point. It's worth mentioning the task force that was formed with the private sector on exactly this topic. So obviously this will be informed by um, incredible academics and, um, and both government agencies and, um, uh, and people working in, uh, in just across the private sector. But, but some of the programs that we've, we've examined, and um, Ginny Romney from IBM is on our task force, and um, one of the incredible things she did at IBM was really work with a series of now over 40 public schools to ensure um, and creating an actual curriculum with those schools, the P-TECH schools. The first one was um, in Brooklyn, New York, actually. And to create a curriculum for these apprentices, for these students going through, and then IBM would hire the students on the other side. And this stemmed, and we heard it time and time again, um, whether it was from Andrew from Dow Chemical um, or Ginny from IBM, so many large organizations were looking to um, cultivate and really create um, in this next generation of graduating students the skills that they need to employ. So it's really happening already. 
um, in a very robust and, and dynamic way in the private sector because of the need. Right now, there are over half a million jobs that can't be filled um, because the students graduating don't have the skills that are relevant for those positions. So we want to bridge that gap. We want to take these programs and, and grow them in, in a very real and measurable way. That's a great point. And, and one of the things we have to do as part of that is we have to rebrand vocational education. We need to make it something that is honored, as your father has said so often, that a skill needs to be honored. Um, and fortunately, we have someone in Ivanka that knows a little bit about branding. You've, you've also been um, a vocal uh, person about uh, the need to empower women in, in the workforce um, uh, and in the workplace. Uh, today is Equal Pay Day uh, nationally. Um, how will this workforce initiative uh, support your goal of empowering women in, in the workplace? Well, my father wants to create 25 million jobs in this country, and women need to fully participate for that to be realized and for that goal to be realized. Women are starting businesses at an enormously fast rate. We need to empower them and to, to fuel that growth. When we think about workforce development and just one component of it I was talking about earlier, STEM education, while 48% of today's workforce are women, only 24% of people in STEM fields are female. And when you think about where the jobs of the future are coming from, that's a, a very frightening statistic. And we're actually moving in the wrong direction. So over the course of a little over a decade, um, women's participation in science, engineering, math, um, and technology has actually slid from um, just around 30 uh, to, um, to now in the low 20s, depending on which of those disciplines. So it's really important we think about the introduction um, of girls in STEM fields in our school system, um, making sure that, that they're really participating in these fields, because when, when we think about equal pay and, um, and the, the challenge we have to, to finally level the playing field, I think this will be a very important component when we think about the future to doing just that. that um, it, it, we talked about it in the first answer. This is going to be a holistic approach. And unfortunately and fortunately, all these topics we're talking about today are big topics. They take a sustained effort in order to effectuate them properly. And you're talking about workforce. Well, that starts in K-12, right? And, and then it leads into a vocational apprenticeship, and then it gets into retraining, as Ivanka was saying. These are big projects, big initiatives, but that's what this administration wants to take on. Let's, uh, let's go to the CEOs uh, to get their input and ideas. I think the... Oops, over here. Hi. Just to pick up on the apprenticeship idea, we've uh, tried that at running a technology company in Charles, New York. Sorry, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. And uh, with Coney, it's, it's actually worked pretty well, but it did take a lot of time, and this is where the federal government can help. So we formed, gave the uh, Coney our software. They built two courses around us, and when the kids graduate and get certified, we guarantee them a job with us or one of our customers. That's working well, but finding the professor who understands that, who wants to do that, understand it's okay for academia to, to partner with a commercial company, that took two or three years to find that person at each university. And the second thing is just the funding. Uh, there has to be a computer infrastructure set up. Somebody has to train the professors. Curriculum has to be built so it's not inexpensive, and that took another two or three years. And so uh, the idea is great, but just need some way to scale it over time and then encourage you, because that's what happens in India and Manila. That's what they've been doing this for many years. If we could do that here... That uh, shortage of talent that we have in technology, that's the way they address it. And, and we've seen some of the most successful examples happening organically, just like you mentioned, where private sector needs um, at companies are being met through community colleges where they're collaborating locally, creating a curriculum um, that is mutually advantageous to the students graduating and, and to the companies who, who are prospective employers. So, so we're, we're studying all those, um, all those different efforts and, and looking to figure out how to scale it. I think um, Secretary Ross met, mentioned the role of digital, which is enormously important. Um, also the role of creating accreditation 
distribution programs and, and really thinking about how um, to, uh, to create um, both standards and, and certificates across different industries. And the construction industry in particular has done quite a good job on this front, and that's why so many of today's apprentices that you see are coming up through that industry. So taking some examples and, and bringing that to manufacturing and bringing that to technology. Now, I'd, I'd like to challenge the people in this audience to come up with a better way to label vocational. We mentioned, Reed mentioned about branding. I think it needs rebranding in two dimensions. One is with the young people themselves, because vocational has taken on a pejorative meaning that I think is unnecessary. But the other is with the parents. Parents have a revulsion to the idea that their offspring might actually work with their hands or not work as af after college. And I think we need to change both mindsets in order to get this program uh, to really work for the young folks. Ivanka, Secretary Ross, Dina, this is a big topic. We appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you.